This is my grandmother when she was a typist. She went to Chicago and became a typist to support her family. You can see quite a bit of my mother in, uh, in her, uh, her face. It's, I'm, I'm a member of the Silver Spring Memoir Group, and we're all writing, you know, memoirs. The Silver Spring Village Memoir Group, and we're all writing memoirs um, for for ourselves, for our for our kids, for our families. Sometimes um, just for the outside world, because everybody has a story. Yeah, this is something, isn't it? with my, my grandmother, my mother's mother, yeah. in, uh, in California. And uh, my, my mother was born there in 1921. And that's, uh, and that's my grandmother. Now that's a trip. Yeah. Ruth Reed Horstman. And I guess this is the house they lived in in San Francisco. If you look on Google Maps, that house is still there. Uh, a couple of years later, he, uh, he, was, he was a German national, and he was having a hard time. This is just the immediate post-World War I period. Yeah. He was having a hard time uh, keeping his business going. He was uh, an engineer and also something of an inventor. So he moved back to, uh, to Germany, yeah. intending to send for his wife and small child. And that never happened. Nice picture of the two of them. That's a married couple, I guess. Yeah. You know, she, she really, all her life, she was bothered by, by this feeling of having been abandoned. And so uh, uh, the, there were letters for a while, and then they stopped around 1933. Oh, 7624. Okay, so this was written on July 6th, 1924. So she would have, my mother would have been three years old at the time. Mm -hmm. And nobody quite knew what had become of him. So that, that was a mystery that, that hung over my mother's head in particular. And of course, also, also her own mother. Um, um, you know, they, they were abandoned by, by, uh, by this man, yeah. Ernst Torstmann, and uh, they just never knew what, it, what had become of him. So it was, it was a real shock. Uh, I didn't really know exactly what had happened to him after the marriage, but then, then um, I, um, I began making some other inquiries and just piecing together little bits of information. And I found out that, that he had been, uh, he'd been a Nazi. It's got a Maltese cross on it. Well, my Monica, yeah, my half aunt said he all his Nazi party records because they're all available in, uh, from a place called the Berlin Document Center in Berlin, uh, run by the uh, the former occupying powers. Even now, even to this day. Um, and then I, I found out that he had been arrested. Um, he had been denounced and uh, arrested in July 1945 mm -hmm. by the Russians. And uh, they, they took him off to a uh, concentration camp, really. And uh, he died there about a month later. So he died as a prisoner of the, of the, uh, of the Soviets. So funny, we all started out as babies. About a year and a half ago, uh, another piece of information surfaced, and this was, um, this was a record uh, of his marriage. Oh. Yeah, he got married a second time in Germany <laughs> without, um, without bothering to inform the authorities that 
he had already been married in the USA. So yeah, I know, it's like, you rat, how can you do this? All in English, his English is very good. Wow. Wait, did, did he become a translator? Right. He uh, he did. He became uh, he became a court interpreter because oh. his English was that good. Here's this is interesting. You know, like it gives you an idea of what the times were like. Very vaulted than Krieg. Who wanted who wanted the war? They had a he and his new spouse, whose name was Lucy, had um, had a. a child in uh, 1933. They got married in 1934. And uh, then they had two more. They had uh, Renata in 1938. And uh, the lady I've, I've been in touch with, Monica, was born in 1941. So she is my, she's my half aunt. Monica was actually, uh, was actually only four when, when uh, when uh, he died, and uh, and she had always wondered, you know, like, you know, how did how did he spend all that time in America? Hmm. So, do you plan to meet Monica? Or oh yeah, we're going to meet her in, in, May. in May. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we have plans to travel. Mm -hmm. She's um, she's actually a very uh, very high powered person. She's a professor of Indian studies at Heidelberg University. So it took a hundred years to solve this, this mystery. So how, did, how did it feel like? How did it feel discovering get a whole other family? Like that must be like, cause I can't imagine just, I don't know, my mind just can't fathom that. I thought it was pretty cool, really. Yeah. Well, I had suspected that, that there would be another family out yeah. there. Um, the surprise, in a way, was that I was actually able to find out about it. So yeah, I was, uh, I was, I like solving problems. You know, this seemed like this was a very interesting problem to solve. Mother, and that's uh, and that's my dad. Now that's a trip. So funny, we all started out with babies. Nice picture of the two of them. It's a married couple. What do you know, eh? There's some nice pictures, actually.